Welcome back to MathSpark. In this video, we're going to talk about preparing for exams. And preparing for exams is crucial to your success at the South Dakota School of Mines and Technology. If we were to look at the semester at a glance, the standard SDSMT semester lasts 15 weeks. And the first third of that, about the first four or five weeks, everything is smooth sailing. Every one of your classes will be a wide stretch of interstate running off into the distance. It will seem like you have oodles of time to get everything done. But at the end of that fourth or fifth week, all of a sudden your smooth sailing will come grinding down to a halt, and the class will suddenly seem much more packed. And your ability to get through that packed class is going to be the difference between whether you end up in here at the final exam, or whether you're one of these guys smoothly sailing through the end of the course. So why is there such a sudden break between that first third of the class and the last two-thirds of the class? It's because at the end of that fourth or fifth week is when you face your very first exam. And how you study for that exam is going to affect how well you make it through that sudden traffic jam of the course when it starts to become more crowded. Now whether or not you needed to do this in high school, let me be clear with you now. If you do not study for your exams, you won't pass them. So the key questions should be, when should you start studying, what should you start studying, and how should you start studying for your exams? Now, in pretty much any math or engineering class, if you ask the professor what you should be studying for in order to pass an exam, you'll get the same smarmy answer. If you have to study for the test, you're not going to pass it. And that's because studying isn't something you're supposed to do the night before a test. Studying is a much more long-term process, and so I want to go over some guidelines for how to prepare for that test, breaking it down into four main time groups. Long-term preparation, what you should be doing from the start of the class, what you should be doing the week before the exam, what should you do in those last 24 hours, the night before and the day of the exam itself, and then, and this is something that people often overlook, what you should be doing after an exam. So let's take a look at long-term preparation first. You should be treating every study hour that you've set aside in your semester block as exam preparation. The annotation that you've been doing in your notes will help you think of questions that an instructor might ask, and so you should be thinking, all right, what could an instructor ask, and write those questions down. The POIA homework process has been preparing you to modulize your problem solving, which again will be helpful on exams. Writing down a quick plan each time is a great way to earn partial credit on your tests, and practice checking your work without a solutions guide or an answer key next to you helps boost the confidence and accuracy you'll have when you eventually take that test. So every study hour is really preparation for an exam. One thing you might also start doing is keeping an idea of how long it takes you to do steps one through three in the POIA process. That's from reading the problem to completing your answer. Having some rough idea of how long it takes you to do problems will give you some idea of how many problems you could get done in a 50-minute exam setting. Next, know how and where to get help. First, if you've got a question about the material, the course, the notes, the reading, anything, ask your professor first. If you're nervous about asking in the middle of class, show up early and quietly ask before. You should also know your professor's office hours and include as many as you can on that semester block. If you show up at an office hour, you get a more one-on-one -on -one interaction with the professor. I'm not going to lie to you, too. Having the professor know who you are and seeing that you are willing to work is always a good thing to have on your side, particularly if you're ever near a borderline grade. Also, consult your syllabus and the professor about other forms of student assistance that might be offered in the class. Many courses have a teaching assistant, TA, or a supplemental instructor, an SI. These are School of Mind students who have experience in the class, and they're there to assist you. Uh, if they've got a recitation section, be sure you're showing up for those. Also, the Tech Learning Center, which is located in the Devereux Library, has student tutors who specialize in the core classes, math, chemistry, physics, and so on, from the 100 to 200 level. So you can show up on a more convenient schedule that fits your timeline to get some assistance. Finally, when you're getting help, make sure you're asking good questions so that you can get the most out of that help. That is, make sure you've asked questions only after you've made a serious attempt to understand what you're asking about. Questions like, what's chapter 8 about, or can you do problem number 4, aren't very good questions. If it's a content question, they should be articulated and precise, and they should be based off of holes in your understanding that turn up during your note annotations. So asking, what's chapter 8 about, isn't a good question. But asking if the derivation of the integration by parts formula is a valid thing to study, would be. 
Similarly, questions about problems should be able to identify where in the POIA process something broke down, so that instead of, can you do problem 4, you're asking something like, well, how do I know when to use the quadratic formula versus factoring to solve an equation? And these are things that you should be doing every single day, as soon as the class starts, as long-term preparation for an exam. But as we get to that week leading up to that test, what are some of the things that you could be doing to sort of focus your study sessions on exam preparation? Well, obviously, first thing to do is know the material to study. Consult the syllabus or a study guide to find out what topics are going to be on an exam and sometimes what topics won't be on an exam. Once you know what's going to be on the test, it's helpful to review and, if possible, re-annotate your notes from class on these topics. Reviewing older material in the context of what you've learned more recently is also a helpful way of putting that information back in your head. If you know the amount of time the test is going to be and have a rough idea of the number of questions, you can approximate the amount of time per question you have. So, for example, if it's a 50-minute exam with 10 problems on it, that's going to give you about 5 minutes per problem. Then, you could go back and redo old homework problems, but give yourself only that amount of time, 5 minutes, to get a sense of what you can do with that amount of time. So now that you know what material to study, take a practice exam, but take it seriously. Many professors will give you older exams or sample exams, but just doing the problems on that study test isn't a very good way of getting you prepared for the actual test. If you happen to have a professor who gives you a practice exam or previous exams, take those exams, but under exam conditions. The same amount of time you're going to have, the same resources. Will you have notes? Will you be allowed a book? Will you be allowed a cheat sheet? Will you be allowed a calculator? Take the test under those conditions. Once the time is actually up, then stop Put those notes away and redo the entire exam again as a homework assignment, checking your answers and doing full write-ups, the whole POIA process. You could then go and ask, how would you grade yourself on that exam? What problems did you get right? What problems did you get wrong? What problems did you get incomplete? This post-checking is critical. Don't cement into your head the wrong way to solve a problem. If you go through and take seven sample exams and you do problem one wrong every single time, what makes you think you're going to get problem one right when you take the next test? If you're not checking your work, you're not doing the problem solving process. And again, if you have other exams, repeat this process. Check for patterns if you have access to multiple old exams or multiple sample exams. Certain problems are going to be of central importance or professor favorites. If you see a problem being repeated over and over again, by gosh, learn how to do that problem. In addition to just doing practice problems, another useful technique is to make a cheat sheet. Regardless of whether or not it's allowed, spending time crafting a good cheat sheet, you know, on a 4x6 or a 3x5 card or a regular sheet of paper, is just a good way to study for the exam. It allows you to organize and isolate the parts of your study that you need to practice or the things that you feel unsure of. It's also a good idea to take a less is more approach to it. Just doing a full information dump on a small card is in no way to study. And I suppose I shouldn't have to say this. But if you're not allowed to bring a cheat sheet into the exam, don't bring your cheat sheet into the exam. This is a study tool, not a cheating tool. So you've worked your way through this final week, and now you're in those last 24 hours, the night before the test, the day of the test. There are two things I want to bring up right now. First thing, do not cram the night before. Cramming for exams does not work, and that's just basic biology. Cramming will put information into your short-term memory, which means it's without context or connection. But if you want to pass a test, particularly a test with mathematics or science or engineering, you want that information already in your long-term memory, which only comes through repetition, which is why we have the long-term preparation activities. Moreover, if you change an established sleep schedule, which you hopefully have because you blocked out the semester, that can be damaging to the connections in your short-term memory. If you've been taking the long-term and the week-term preparation before, the best thing you can do the night before is go to bed, maybe go to bed even a little bit early. You've probably earned it. Get a good sleep, get a good breakfast. So now it comes time to take that test. This might sound silly, but think as you're taking the test. Once you get the whole exam, read through it from cover to cover. Read all the questions, read the front matter, have an idea of what's going to be asked on this thing. Once you've seen the entire exam, there's a couple things you can do quickly. Order the problems based on ease of completion. If some problems are easier and some problems are harder, well, do the easier problems first. 
Also, get some rough idea of the per problem time by dividing the time you have by the number of problems in order to get a rough idea of how much time you can devote to each problem. If that last part sounds familiar, it was one of the things I said you should do during your practice exam study, here's something else that should sound familiar. Remember your POIA. Write down your plan to solve a problem, which is a good way of earning partial credit. And look back and check. If at all humanly possible, check your work, especially if you have extra time near the very, very end. So good luck on that test. Now the test is over and your brain is fried. You're done, right? Well, no, not really. As soon as that test is over, write down as many of the problems as you can remember, and then put those as part of your homework queue to work on a little bit later on. Don't just blow these things off. You've invested time in study. Make sure you try to get as much of them done correctly as you can. Many instructors will allow you to redo an exam, and you spending the time to work on the problems you know now will be beneficial if that comes down the pike. Also, when you get your exam returned, Fully redo it as a homework assignment, correcting and completing each problem. And if multiple versions were handed out, try doing some of the other versions as well. In mathematics, in science and engineering, the classes are snowball classes. Everything you learn in a previous section will appear again later on, especially if you have a comprehensive final. So the practice you put on these exams is going to help you prepare yourself for that final exam at the very, very end. Just keep calm and test on, and you'll do a great job. So this video is going to wrap up our introduction to basic study skills that you need for college. So in the next video, I'm not going to talk about study skills at all, but I want to show you one of the most important features of your tablet PC, the computer program Maple.